This last April, I was in London, and right across the street from the British Museum, there's a really small, rare bookshop. So I go in and I walk into the shop and it has that old book smell and all the, the walls are lined with books from floor to ceiling. And they have these amazing books that I start looking for, you know, the kinds with these beautiful leather covers and bindings and interesting illustrations and these worn, musty pages. And then I come upon this book. This is called Lady Bountiful's Legacy, and it was printed in 1868. And this was specifically printed or created with a specific woman's legacy in mind. So this is kind of interesting. If we look at the cover page, it says Lady Bountiful's Legacy to her family and friends, a book of practical instructions and duties, counsels and experiences, antidotes, hints, and recipes in housekeeping and domestic management. And um, it's really interesting to look through this book um, because you'll, you'll see that um, if we look at the table of contents here, um, this woman you know, put together, so, so she has sort of, the, the very first part is her, her legacy, so who was Lady Bountiful? And then we have the good housewife, so this is how to, um, the, the duties of a domestic character, and the English housewife, and how to be a good housewife. And then we have pro progress of cookery and housewifery. We have early rising, time to sleep. So there's tips about when to sleep and when to rise. House and home and the fire. Um, chapter of fires, the house, or the, the house and office. Pure air and water, penny wise and pound foolish. So a little bit about money there. Um, we have choice of food. So what kind of food to eat, giving dinners, the storeroom, curing, pickling, sauces, winemaking, etc. Homemade wines, liquors, and summer drinks. Bread making, the toilet, um, so things like cosmetics, perfumes. Domestic remedies, chapter of accidents, cookery for the poor, and then domestic service. Uh, and, you know, so, so it starts off with a, a story of this, this woman's life, and then um, and then we go go on to these various chapters about uh, about housewifery and accidents and things like that. Um, on page 173, she talks about giving dinners. So um, this this is the beginning of the chapter about giving dinners. Uh, so she starts with the golden rule for giving dinners is let all dinners be according to the means of the givers. It is a great mistake of people of moderate means to attempt to imitate the dinners of the rich. If a great man dines with Mr. Smith, Mr. Th Smith thinks he must give the great man the sort of dinner he is accustomed to. And for this purpose, he employs an expensive man cook for the day or engages a confectioner to provide a dinner and gives the great man a very poor imitation of a first rate repast. If Mr. Smith had been more modest and judicious, he would have given the great man a plain dinner with everything the very best of its sorts, which would have been a relish worthy of the guest. So she has a whole bunch of tips like this. Um, another really fun chapter is the um, chapter about accidents. So this is on page uh, 324. Um, I, I thought this was really interesting. So, well, starting on page 321, she talks about accidents. So this is what you do when you have you know, a, a bite of an animal or bleeding or broken bones. Um, but on page 332, she talks specifically about what to do in a thunderstorm. So she says, it would be better to avoid having about one metallic objects when fearing to be struck in the time of a storm. Dr. Franklin recommends not to keep oneself too near to chimneys, the suit of which is able to conduct the electric discharge. So she has a whole bunch of tips like this. Um, another interesting thing is swallowing pins. Who knew that swallowing pins was such, such a catastrophe? Uh, so she says, a, a woman having accidentally let 17 pins slip down her throat, most of them lodging in her gullet, a neighbor resorted to the old-fashioned, and in this case, efficacious method of persistently slapping the patient's back. In the course of a couple of hours, 14 pins were slapped up and three down, and beyond the pain and irritation of the throat, no harm had been done. Another remedy to eat a quality or quantity rather of crumbs of bread or boiled potatoes, after which take a home medic or swallow the white of an egg. So if you ever have 
a disastrous experience with swallowing pins. You, you know now how, how to fix that. Um, anyway, this is just a, a charming little book about, about her legacy. And, you know, it, it, um, it got me thinking, you know, if, if you were to put together a, a book like this, what kinds of information would you want to pass on to your family? And would you put it together with, with this kind of charm? Um, like, I, I love that she put together this book with these gold leaf pages and the, this beautiful binding that's leather and, you know, it has the, the gold imprint. Um, but, but how would your legacy book look? And what kind of information would you include? It also makes you wonder what sorts of information will be completely obsolete in 150 years. If you wrote about driving a car, for instance, your great-great-grandchildren might scratch their heads because they had only been exposed to self-driving vehicles. Whether some of the content was obsolete or not, it would be such a delight to read through and an incredible gift for your family. If you're interested in passing your non-financial assets like your wisdom, your values, and your beliefs to your family and leaving a great impact on the world, make sure to grab a free subscription to our online magazine. Go to LegacyArtsMagazine.com and you'll see it there. In every issue, we interview fascinating people about their legacies, from Fortune 500 CEOs to artists to philanthropic leaders to best-selling authors. We also offer tips, guidance, and strategies for developing an excellent legacy of your own.